Hey, Bendy. So I didn't bring my ear, AirPods up now, so you might hear a bit of wind in this video, but just thought I'd do a little video. Uh, I've just come up to check my horses because I've got a can't spot. Oh, they're being a bit cheeky. There's Tommy, and Tommy's wants his salt block and pushing everybody away. But I've got little Bendy here. Hey, Bendy. And then I've got Junior over there. Yeah. I just thought I'd do a little video, just I'm just aware that um, I mean I've got a, a lot of horses. I've got um, 18 all up, and yeah, uh, how many have I got in this herd? Oh God, where are they? Oh, I think I've got six, uh, 15, 14, 15 or so up here, and uh, some of them. I mean I've had some for quite a long while. Um, ones not that long at all, and um, others. You know sort of uh, a year or so just uh, yeah from a few years to a year but I noticed they've all got uh, such different personalities they've all had um, such a different experience through life all of them except for Toothless and Nellia off the track thoroughbreds and just noticing some I uh, like or oh, Bindi's she's actually got a lot more friendly but she's been pretty good but little Zini now she's over there in the blue sort of check blue navy red and blue rug and she was just up hanging around me and literally could not she was so didn't want you let's be careful with these hey Tommy's coming up here's Tom's come up for cuddles hey yeah, new Tom, isn't he a smoochies? I've had Tom for, oh, geez, since I've been up on the Central Coast, I used to ride Tom track work up on the Central Coast. His race name is Ginger Tom. Anyway, as I was saying, as we talked to Tom, what, the sun's there, Tom, we can't see you. Let's go, what, well, the sun's there. <laughs> we suddenly see his beautiful face. Uh, Zena, it had didn't want anything to do with me at all um, when she came in the paddock. I... Zena came to me from a lady that was bought her for, I think she bought her for $1,500 off the track. And she found that um, she was quite to ride at home, but absolutely full on when she got out to a show. And this lady was really focused on getting out and competing, you know, you sort of riding clubs and, and things like that, um, and would drag her around. And um, she wasn't willing to um, have her re-educated, just not really interested. So. Um, because the situation is so hard with re um, rehoming, I should say, off the track thoroughbreds, I took her on. Um, but she tried to sell her for a while with no success. And I noticed when Zini came to me, and when I've come in the paddock, I'd, I'd go to walk up to her and she just didn't want anything to do with me. Uh, I'm not one to force them into being with me. Earlier in the days, you, uh, I've sort of learnt that you know, it doesn't have to be perfect. Well, it does with training. Um, but in saying that, you know, when you, when you, you know, if they walk away, just let them walk away. I mean, they need to have a say. Uh, I'm not trying to catch a Xena or anything. And because I'm injured at the moment, it's a, oh, it's somewhere over there. <laughs> it's, we'll go up and say hello to Dragon. I, I'm not doing, I'm not riding, I'm not doing much work with the horses at all. I've only had Sam in doing some groundwork. There's Dragon, hey Dragon. Race name Dragon Force, I used to ride Dragon Trek with. And there's Cindy, beautiful Cindy, who used to be called Ginny. Hey, you're getting your new rug. With, we're getting a new rug from Karen, who uh, owns Bill. I had Bill with me as a client's horse and she's kindly donated her winter rug to me because it's a lot warmer up in Queensland and she lives up there in Queensland. So Cindy's getting a new rug. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, clean your eyes a little bit. Anyway, there's Cindy. So, as I was saying, earlier in the years I would worry, or even a year ago, I would worry about horses walking away from me. But they're walking away for a reason. Um, you know, they've had a bad experience with humans. They've been, you know, worked and, and felt pain. Obviously, race horses, they completely live a different existence than um, most other horses or all other horses other than standard breads. And I just have let her go. I haven't done anything with her yet. She's out for a spell. I'm injured. And I'm just noticing I came in the paddock today. Well, I've noticed the last week and she's a lot more interested in interacting with me. Uh, I'll just see if she lets me walk up to her. Uh, and if she if she walks away, I'm just going to let her walk away. See, so she's walking away. She's not really that interested. Now, I'm just going to let her walk away. 
um you know when it comes time to catching her in that well obviously i'm gonna have to if she still does that i'll bring up a little bit of a tidbit and and entice her with uh, some food cindy see even cindy was never wanting to interact with me but now she's coming up and one what i've learned is i'm giving them a voice i've you know not like you have to do what i say type of thing and this is not with i'm not talking about re-educating and and foundation training and that that's a different area and you know I'll, I'll talk about that when i get to it i'm currently building online courses and tutorials but just in the paddock i've been coming in the paddock and just hanging out with them checking their rugs their feet their you know everything to make sure they're okay every day and sort of hang with them and i'm noticing horses that didn't want to interact with me <laughs> you're tired am i keeping you awake so much more relaxed like Cindy here like look <laughs> and she's just walked up to me and and she would never have done that before I'm not asking them to do anything when I'm coming in the paddock I you know just sort of wait and I make sure that I stay out of their way when they interact because they have a little dipsy doodle there but um so Zena is licking the salt lick and mineral lick and cindy was just probably wanting to get to it and she's hanging out with me aren't you was that a little bit scary uh, we should bring bossy cindy's not the, you're down on the bottom of the pecking order aren't you but um they're all get on really well she's not the lowest i don't think I think bonza may still be underneath her uh but they, this is really no everyone sort of gets on with everybody and accepts where they are and they're a great herd but just a little video to say you know sometimes just observing your horse and seeing what they're doing if if you get a horse and they walk away from you they're walking away for a reason you know they are associating you or humans or the work that they're doing something is in their mind that is not giving them good feelings uh, and you know not wanting to be caught or be around humans or you or you know whatever um because i haven't done anything with zini i'm not going to say it's anything that i've done with her um but yeah just a little video well, i can't talk <laughs> a little video to just observe your horse and see their how they interact with you or not want to interact with you and instead of forcing them to do something I think what I've noticed is just being and being there for them and just letting them come up if, if they're interested or maybe slightly go up them. Snippy's another one that's never wanted to interact with me. Uh, Snippy's had a very abusive history um, in in racing except for his last trainer who was very, very kind. But um, And then once again, when he was rehomed, there's Snippy, Snippy Lala. He had a terrible experience for two years with the girl that took him on and um, through ignorance and not knowing she, well, the sun's there, isn't it? Um, wasn't interested. But even actually me getting up this close with Snippy without him walking away is a big success. And I haven't done anything with Snippy yet. I really, he was really traumatized, this horse. As plus, he was in terrible condition. He was saved from Shep Meats after going through Echuca sales. Uh, ended up in Shep Meats and with um, some wonderful people who donated towards his rescue. He's been with me for, I think, two years now. And uh, look, other than, you know, I've, I've done a bit of, you know, you know, he's obviously had his teeth. Oh, he hasn't had his, yeah, he had his teeth done initially and he's due to get them done again. Um, he's actually getting them done next time my dentist comes out, which is in a few weeks. Um, but obviously his feet and worming and all of that. But he never wanted anything to do with me. And look, the fact that I can even stand here is a big achievement. And I've just let him walk away. I'm not going to force him to be with me. And initially I thought, yeah, you're not supposed to. How am I going to catch you? What happens if you walk away? I'm you know you're going to be difficult to catch and he has been difficult to catch in his history he's been hard to catch um i am not worrying about that and sometimes i think it's really important when you get a off the track thoroughbred to give them a spell especially if they've come or if they've come from a traumatic situation uh they've come straight out of racing definitely give them a spell but and, and let them be a horse that ideally really you should have them with at least one other horse they're a social animal so sneaky social animal and they need to have companionship um another horse at least one horse for their well-being and you know their 
their health. And he's just really turned a corner, Snippy, and I'm looking forward to, you know, getting him up and going. And I feel giving him this really good break and his confidence has improved. I don't know if you can see <laughs> I'm showing you just half of him. Uh, his confidence has improved so much, just the way he interacts with his paddock mates uh he's been able to just be a horse and graze and you now he gets all snuggy rubbed up and all of that but yeah i've noticed a difference with him and he's a lot more accepting of me and when he sees me in the paddock come in the paddock he comes up he actually comes up a lot closer and he'll even wait at the gate that doesn't always mean i can go up to him or he'll come up straight away he has come up to me he snips so i just walk up and if he walks away i let him walk away if he doesn't and I'll give him, you know, he doesn't like being touched. Hey, so I'm not, so, you know, yeah. Hey, yes, Snippy, let me have a little scratch. Yeah, so I'm even bending down here and just give him a little scratch. Hey, Snippy, you're such a good boy. Yeah, I know. But if he walked away now, I just let him walk away. Hey. And by the time I bring him in and have him in full work and, and that, He's going to have a lot more confidence in me. He knows, you know, he's spent enough, enough time with me now that, to know that he's safe and he's not going to experience pain or stress. And I'll take it very slowly with him like I do all my horses, really. And he's snippy. He's so cute. He's so cute, aren't you? Yeah, where's Snips? Where's your, where's your snog? There's your little noggin. He's a gorgeous boy. Anyway hang out with your horse observe their behaviors they're good behaviors they're not so good and like you would a person you might think oh that person's a bit standoffish or um they're really really full-on and really friendly um and there's reasons for that the same with your horse anyway a uh, bit of a rambling video but i thought i'd just um you know point that out and see you in the next video bye